Oliver Wallstrom did not sign his tender offer by the 5 p.m. Saturday deadline. So what's next for Oliver Wallstrom? Will he be an Islander this season? We've got that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Monday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. And we are now also available on SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search for Locked On Islanders. Lots to talk about on today's show, including the future of Oliver Wallstrom. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, feel free to send us an email to LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name and where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we discuss whatever it is that's on your mind. You can also follow the show on Twitter at Locked On Isles. You can follow me, Gil Martin, on Twitter at Ice Wars, NYR VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all the latest Islanders news notes and happenings. And uh, whether it's hirings, firings, free agent signings, trade rumors, we'll have it all covered for you right here on the Locked On Islanders podcast. Reminder again to our everydayers and to everyone else out there. We are now going to start on a summer schedule, so we will have new shows Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, three shows a week, Uh, but again, if there is major breaking news, we will definitely have a show right away and cover that under the circumstances. So, 5 p.m. Saturday deadline passed Oliver Wallstrom and Jakob Skerek did not sign their uh, tender offers. And so the question becomes, now what? What happens to these two players? And, you know, not signing this offer does not necessarily mean that Wally is not going to be uh, an Islander this year. It really kind of makes sense on a certain level that Wallstrom did not accept the offer. The offer would have paid him $874,125. And that is slightly below by about $20,000 a year what his contract was that he signed back in 2019. So Rather than taking a pay cut, Wallstrom decided, hey, you know what? I'm going to continue to negotiate with the New York Islanders. Now, if you remember Wallstrom speaking to reporters on getaway day, which if I recall correctly was May 1st, Wallstrom indicating that he's ready to be with the Islanders. He'll be ready for the start of training camp. This is more or less, you know, what he's expecting to have happen. And it does seem like the Islanders want to re-sign him. Now, he was clearly involved in the rumored trade that the Islanders were trying to work out for Alex Dabrinkit. If a hockey trade is eventually made, it does remain possible that Oliver Wallstrom will be a part of it. But uh, right now, under the collective bargaining agreement between the National Hockey League and the NHL Players Association, Wallstrom has until December 1st to, to sign a new deal with the Islanders or he has to sit out all of the upcoming season. I am pretty close to 100% certain that he will not sit out the season. That would be absolutely 
wouldn't make any sense whatsoever for Oliver Wallstrom to do, whether he continues his career with the Islanders or whether he continues his career somewhere else, Wallstrom really should not sit a year out. That really doesn't make sense. And look, you could sit there and say, oh yeah, well, uh, $874,000 a year is not a lot of money for an NHL hockey player. And it's not, it's toward the bottom of the pay scale. But uh, if somebody said, well, you could play hockey for my team this year and you can make almost $900,000 or you could sit at home and make nothing or you'd have to go to Europe to play hockey, you know, it, it doesn't seem to make sense that he would reject the offer and Wallstrom, you know, wants to be in the NHL. So we'll see how this ends up playing out. But right now, Wallstrom is still going to negotiate with the Islanders. My gut feeling is that we are looking at a deal sometime between now and September 1st. And again, Knowing Lou Lamorello, he may reach an agreement on a deal tomorrow uh, or, or any time between now and the opening of training camp, but he may hold off on announcing it pending any trades, pending any other moves uh, or signings or what have you, because that is the typical MO of Lou Lamorello. So we'll see how this all plays out. But I think if you think about it, Oliver Wallstrom right now remains a wild card for the New York Islanders. And if Wally does sign and does play for the team, he is a guy who could be anywhere in this lineup in any of the top three lines. He, if he does manage to take that step forward and establish himself as an NHL player, He could get you 20, maybe even possibly 25 goals in the season and help give this team the offense that they need or some of the offense that they need to get higher than 22nd in the league. He may even be able to help the power play a little bit, but it's a big if factor. We don't know whether or not Wallstrom will take that jump. And I guess the question becomes, do the flaws in his game cause him to never realize the potential that the Islanders hope he would develop? Uh, You know, the, the worst case scenario for the Islanders is that he signs with the team and ends up either getting hurt again, which would be very bad, or, you know, plays 60, 70 games and still only scores 15 goals, 12 goals, doesn't play well, doesn't take his game to the next level, and then the Islanders more or less remain stagnant offensively, barring, again, that hockey trade that we've spoken so much about. But if you're going to improve internally, Wallstrom has got to be the number one candidate to try to improve the offense. Whether or not he'll do that is open to question and whether or not he would be part of a hockey trade. I'll put that in air quotes for you, Lou Lamorello skeptics. But if he's part of a hockey trade, that could change the equation as well. So we're going to keep an eye on that. We have got a lot more to discuss on today's show. Jakob Skarek, the starting goalie for the Bridgeport Islanders, also did not sign his tender offer. We'll talk about what that means for his future with the organization, plus uh, the Athletic releasing some too early predictions for next season. And again, for the Islanders, they kind of contradict each other. We'll talk about that. And a whole lot more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Take your first swing at betting on Major League Baseball on FanDuel and get 10 times your first bet amount in bonus bets up to $200. That's right. Just bet 20 bucks and you'll land $200 in bonus bets, win 
or lose. That's 200 you can spend betting on everything from the money line to the over-under to who you think is going to be the first to hit a home run. And whether you're a Met fan or a Yankee fan or a fan of any of the other teams in MLB, you'll see lots of great possibilities, odds, and prop bets on FanDuel. It's all on an app that's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you can get paid instantly. There's no better place to bet on MLB than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So sign up today. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get up to $200 in bonus bets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. So as I mentioned, Jakob Skarek also not signing his tender offer. And unlike Oliver Wallstrom, this situation, I think, is a little different. And while Wallstrom turned down the tender offer and probably would make more money negotiating a deal with the Islanders, I think Wallstrom is probably going to make somewhere around a million to 1.1 million, kind of the exact amount of money that Ross Johnston would free up in cap space if the Islanders send him down to Bridgeport. But Skarek has a completely different situation. Skarek, basically, his qualifying offer, 787500 last year. His cap hit was 754000 167. So it would have been about a 32 and change thousand dollar raise for Skarek. But the thing about Jakob Skarek, his path to the NHL right now, barring injury, is blocked by Ilya Sorokin and Semyon Varlamov. Sorokin, nine years left on his contracts. Varley, four years left on his. So if Skarek wants a chance to play in the NHL. He's not likely to get it with the Islanders. Now, he could come back and be the number one guy at Bridgeport, but he still hasn't really proven himself to be an elite AHL goalie, let alone an elite NHL goalie. His goals against average last year, 3.37, not terrible, but not special. The save percentage, 892. Again, not even a 90 save percentage. Again, not terrible or rotten, but not elite or really good. And if that's what he's doing in the AHL, it doesn't seem that he's NHL ready. And and granted, the Bridgeport Islanders were not the strongest defensive team in the AHL, but it was not a great season for Skerek. He very well could head to Europe whether it's the KHL or Sweden or Finland or somewhere else uh, in Europe, that remains a possibility for Skerek or the Islanders could trade his rights to another organization in North America who may be able to give him a better opportunity to start and have a chance at least of reaching the National Hockey League. So it's a, a, a little... A little tricky out there when it comes to Jakob Skarek, but I get the feeling that he has probably played his last game in the Islanders organization, at least for now. Look, who knows? Three, four years from now, he could come back, sign a deal, sign another contract, but we'll see. Meanwhile, the Athletic making some early predictions with uh, some of their national writers. And, you know, this kind of was a little bit surprising in some ways. Uh, They voted on who would be the first coach fired. And uh, Lane Lambert of the Islanders did get at least one vote, uh, tied for eighth on this list behind DJ Smith of Ottawa, Craig Berube of St. Louis. So at least somebody is thinking that that is a possibility. But the contradiction came here. When they voted on who was most likely to win the Vezina Trophy, Ilya Sorokin of the Islanders was the runaway winner in that category. 
Sorokin actually got more than 50% of the vote, and nobody else got more than 16.1% of the vote. So, you know, the the athletics hockey experts all on the Ilya Sorokin bandwagon. And, you know, here's here's the quote from one of their writers. Ilya Sorokin is sensational and only getting better. He's still adding layers to his game and picking up tendencies from shooters around the league, which is a scary thought. Um, so a lot of positivity there for Sorokin, tied for second in votes Igor Shosturkin of the Rangers and Jake Ottinger of the Dallas Stars. So you, you figure that, okay, the uh, writers are very high on Ilya Sorokin, that he's going to have a great season for the New York Islanders. And I, I think there's a lot of logic there. Sorokin is set up to have a really strong season. But they vote that way. And then when it comes time to determine who will make the playoffs in the Eastern Conference, seven of the eight teams that made the playoffs this past year were picked to go again. The Devils, the Hurricanes, the Lightning, the Leafs, the Rangers, the Bruins, the Panthers, all of them picked to make it. The eighth and final playoff spot in voting here, the Buffalo Sabres. So the only team that made the playoffs this past year that is not expected to make the playoffs by the athletics expert writers coverage the New York Islanders. And the Islanders were not even ninth on this list. That went to the Pittsburgh Penguins. The Islanders were 10th behind Pittsburgh and just ahead of Ottawa, Detroit, Washington, Columbus, Montreal, and Philadelphia with those last three teams not getting any votes at all in this poll. So, how do you explain that more than half of the experts in this poll thought that Sorokin would be the winner of the Vezina Trophy, but that the Islanders would not make the playoffs? Because let's face it, if Sorokin has a Vezina Trophy year, the Islanders are going to be in absolutely every game just about that Sorokin starts and that he plays well in and I think this is just another example, and boy, have we seen a lot of them over the years, of the New York Islanders just not getting the respect that they deserve from the national media. Now, look, I'm not going to sit here and say I believe the Islanders should be a favorite to improve or even that they should be a favorite to make the playoffs. But if you're picking Sorokin to win the Vezina, I have to think that the Islanders, if, if he's the best goalie in the league, the Islanders are probably going to at least make the playoffs unless nothing changes on this team. Nobody steps up and uh, things go awry. So again, uh, a little bit of a contradiction here. The national media just not showing a lot of faith in the New York Islanders, but it's a long way from where we are to the start of the season. And as we said, uh, a lot of things going to happen between now and then. Even the title of the article was Too Early Predictions for the 2023-2024 season. So still up in the air. We don't know about Wallstrom. Obviously, another hockey trade could be made depending on what Lou Lamorello decides to do. And we don't know about injuries. We don't know about players having breakout seasons, players who fade. So again, these are very early predictions, but faith in Sorokin, no faith in this team actually getting to the playoffs. Little irony there. But what else is new? All right. We have got more to get to on today's show. When we come back, our Islanders birthday of the day. And this is a special one. This is 
someone who I think you can make the argument was the greatest all around player in Islanders history. And in my opinion, is the greatest forward in Islanders history. We're going to spend a little more time than usual talking about him because of that. Uh, so join us for that. More to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And today is the 67th birthday of former Islanders center Brian Trottier. Trottier drafted in the second round by the Islanders back in 1974 after a 46-goal, 98-point season with the Leftbridge Broncos, 144 points, 98 assists in 67 games, joins the Islanders for the 75-76 season, puts up 32 goals as a rookie, wins the Calder Trophy as Rookie of the Year, 32 goals and 63 assists. So in his first season in the league, 95 points. Fell off to 30 goals and 72 points in his second season. And then started a streak of five straight 100-point seasons. And six out of seven uh, where he was just on fire. His career high in goals, 50 back in 81-82. He wins the Art Ross Trophy in 1978-79, also wins the Hart Memorial Trophy in that year, and oh yeah, he wins the Conn Smythe Trophy uh, in 1979-80 as the playoff MVP, and then finally in 88-89 with the Islanders, wins the King Clancy Memorial Trophy, which is the same award that Anders Lee was up for this past year. Hard to imagine what Trottier meant to this Islanders team, but he was a leader. He was a great goal scorer, as evidenced by the 50 goals in 81-82, and what is it here? Uh, Four other seasons of 40 or more. He was also a great passer, had 87 assists in 1978-79. he could pass. He was not bad in his own zone. We talked about that Con Smythe trophy in 1980. 12 goals, 29 points in 21 playoff games. And the following year, 29 points in 18 playoff games, 29 points in 19 playoff games, and 20 points in 17 playoff games. Have you noticed that in each of the four years, the Islanders won the Stanley Cup? Brian Trottier played a major role in the team's success. So Trottier, a member of the Hockey Hall of Fame, deservedly so, after leaving the Islanders, goes on to play three seasons with the Pittsburgh Penguins and wins two more Cups, six Stanley Cup championships as a player for Brian Trottier in 1,279 career NHL games, 524 goals, 901 assists, 1,425 points. So even when he got older and slowed down, which maybe was the last five years of his career, that didn't prevent him from being well above a point a game for his career. And in the playoffs, 221 games, 71 postseason goals, 184 points, and 277 penalty minutes. Was an assistant coach with the Penguins and won some more there. Uh, Also with the Avalanche. Briefly, in a chapter we like to forget, he was head coach of the Rangers for part of the 02-03 season, but was fired after just 54 games. And it never looked or felt right seeing him behind the Rangers bench. It's easy to pinpoint the best game Brian Trottier played as a New York Islander. December 23rd, 1978, at the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum. The Rangers are the visiting team. This is not only the best game of Brian Trottier's Islanders career. This is one of the great 
single game statistical performances in the history of this league. In this game, where Wayne Thomas started in goal for the Rangers, Billy Smith for the Islanders. The Islanders go on to win this game by a final score of 9-4. to four. Brian Trottier has five goals and three assists, so he figures in eight of the nine goals that the Islanders scored in this route. He was a plus six. Two of the goals came on the power play. Three at even strength. <coughs> he took eight shots on goal. Mike Bossy took eight shots on goal. The two of them had 16 of the 36 shots that the Islanders took. Clark Gillies had four assists in this game, but was completely overshadowed by Trache. Mike Bossy, two goals and three assists, also completely overshadowed by Trache. He did not, however, get the game-winning goal. That one belonged to Stefan Pearson. Uh, and that, by the way, was the only goal out of the nine that Brian Trottier did not get an assist on or score. So an unbelievable performance. The fact that it came against the Rangers made it that much sweeter. And if you go back and watch that game, and I believe you can find at least highlights of it on YouTube, just an unbelievable performance. And I, I, when I spoke to Brian Trache about it for my book, Ice Wars, he really uh, talked about what went right and how he was able to accomplish this amazing eight-point performance in this big game against the Islanders' biggest rival. I want to thank everyone again for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Every dayers, we will be back on Wednesday to talk a little more Islanders hockey will have all the latest news and uh, <clears throat> hopefully we'll get some update soon about Oliver Wallstrom and any other trade rumors that are going on. So make sure you join us for that. Until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.